Well, with mindfulness satna practice, one might satna at first discover how much the mind is under the influence of random you know, thinking, how much you know, the mind is under the influence of, uh, of at times, obsessive you know, thinking, unwholesome mental states come up, and one isn't you know, truly happy. And you know, when, you know, when one realizes um, on occasion how the five hindrances come up, uh, so you know, there's this hindrance of sense desire, the hindrance of ill will, the hindrance of sloth and torpor and restlessness and remorse, and certain uh, skeptical you know, doubt. You know, obviously, one suffers, and so, you know, then one may want to get out of this. And so, by being mindful of all you know, these certain different mental you know, states, gradually they you know, will, together with effort and certain concentration, they will you know, temporarily be you know, suppressed. And certain with this, then you know, some wholesome mental states arise, such as calmness of mind, clarity of mind, you know, certain confidence might you know, arise. Also, in contentment might arise, and that already makes a big you know, difference. And with this, with some initial experiences like this, a retreat and might uh, you know, see the benefits of you know, meditation and be you know, then encouraged to you know, continue. And even if you know, a person says, "Well, meditation is boring," you know, then it, it, even that boredom is of a temporary you know, nature, and so uh, one could you know, learn. You know, to be mindful of the boredom itself, to investigate that, and uh, you know, then renew one's interest in you know, you know, the activity. And that might uh, you know, then even strengthen one's curiosity, and that would certainly help for life in general.